Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome to the Ingalls Furman Radio Network game preview for this weekend's matchup here at Furman. Paladin's entertaining Mercer in the Southern Conference opener for both teams. I am Dan Scott. Happy to have you with us and uh, look forward over the course of the next few minutes to uh, getting a little in-depth into this matchup and uh, taking a look at some of the storylines that we are following here from a radio standpoint as we prepare for the broadcast on Saturday. We're recording this on Friday, so we're talking about tomorrow. It's supposed to be just gorgeous as far as the weather is concerned. I don't know about you, but uh, I walked out of the house this morning uh, to uh, first walk the dog and then get ready to come over here to to do this video and, and do some other things. It was 50 degrees where I lived. I actually had to break out the little thin jacket this morning. It's a function of getting older, I think. I, I do not like to be cold. But, man, you talk about gorgeous weather and a great day for football. Chamber of Commerce, early fall weather. It is going to be fantastic here at Paladin Stadium. We're going to get into all of that as we go through this short video. Here in the office, as you can see, doing some work, uh, spotting boards and, and all of those type of things that we do to prepare for a game broadcast. And this one, now the, the real season starts for the Paladins, if you will. Not that every game's not important, we know that, but the winner of the Southern Conference gets the automatic bid to the FCS playoffs. You take your fate out of the hands of a group of people who go behind closed doors and call themselves a committee and you get a chance to get off to a good start against a Mercer team that you remember back in the spring beat Furman 26-14 to in Drew Cronick's first matchup against his former team. He was here twice as an assistant coach, most notably, of course, 2017, Clay Hendricks's first year here at Furman. Drew Cronick was the offensive coordinator. He's now the head coach at Mercer in his second season. And the Bears will come in, and we're going to talk about all the funky things they do offensively here in just a moment. Uh, so both of these teams looking to get off to a uh, great start in conference play. And uh, let's kind of zero in on some of the uh, factors and uh, just info on this game. First of all, just kind of look at the game capsule. You see the uh, the head coaches. Drew Cronick's record goes back to uh, his uh, coaching days uh, outside of Division One, down in Georgia is a Mercer record there you see in his second season, 6-7. and seven. Clay Hendricks, 27-19 and 19 here, 3-1 and one in four games against the Bears, the lone loss coming 26-14 this spring. When you start to look at some of these statistical comparisons between these teams, the numbers are obviously skewed, more so for Mercer, I think, than Furman, because Furman has played three games, two against FCS opponents, and one, of course, against uh, North Carolina State this past Saturday. Mercer has played twice. They have played Point University, which the Powell has played in 2019, NAIA school, and they have played Alabama. So their, their numbers are much more skewed just because of the caliber of competition they've played on both ends of the spectrum. And the Paladins, again, with that North Carolina State game kind of decreasing some of those numbers a bit or increasing the defensive numbers, now from week to week you're going to start to get a clear view of who these teams are inside conference play against their own level of competition. But you see those numbers. Uh, total offense through two games for Mercer, 497 is their average. Most of that came against Point, obviously, in their opener. The Paladins at 351 through three games. Rushing the ball, again, Mercer against Point just ran it uh, out of control, basically. Obviously did not run it anywhere near that effective against Alabama. And um, when you go down to some of the things that you can start to quantify a little bit, like uh, turnover margin, the Paladins through three games, including the NC State game, are a plus three. You go back to the spring, and, and that was one of the issues on the defensive side of the football. The Paladins, I believe, and this is going off the top of my head, were minus four in the turnover margin for the uh, seven games that were played in the spring. So off to a good start in that category right now, plus three in the turnover margin. 
One of the things that we're going to be paying attention to, obviously, when we get into the nuts and bolts of this game from a broadcast standpoint, and, and the coaches are paying attention to it as well, it is the, the funky nature of Drew Cronick's offense. We saw it to a certain degree when he was the offensive coordinator here at Furman in 2017. He's the guy in charge at Mercer now, so uh, the, the, the uh, chains have come off, so to speak, and he can run his offense at will, do what he wants to because he's the one calling the shots. And they are an offense that is run out of a base wing tee, and they do so many different things with motion and formations and trying to get you look, looking in one direction and going in another. It's almost like defending a team that runs a good triple option, but with a, a lot more th- of a threat in the passing game. It, it's what I have termed in, in talking with Dwayne Vaughn and, and Clay Hendricks this week, defensive coordinator and head coach respectively, eye candy. Do do you fall victim to the eye candy they show you and miss what they're actually trying to do, or can you be disciplined enough keeping your eyes on the football, not get fooled, not get tricked, not get distracted by all of the things that they do? Because as we have seen, again, going back to 2017, I think when P.J. Uh, Blazjowski uh, was the quarterback and Andy Shumpert was the tight end. Remember how many times Shumpert was just running free in opposing secondaries? That's kind of what Mercer wants to do. They want to get you so confused if they can have success in the running game, especially with all the misdirection, and then, boom, they're going to slip a receiver behind you. And so that when I talk about eye candy, that's what I mean. Furman's defense, especially the front seven, cannot be fooled. And, and maybe even more importantly – the 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 uh, the secondary the the corners and safeties especially when the safeties are coming up in run support they can't get fooled and let somebody get behind them you go back to the spring game uh, down in Macon and the Paladins defensively did a really nice job of making Mercer one dimensional they shut down for the most part the Bears rushing attack and forced them to throw the football the problem in that game was and I think the count was something like eight or nine clear shots at sacking the quarterback, and they could not do it. And turning what could have been a 7, 8, 10, 12-yard loss into, on a couple of occasions, a 30-yard gain. So if you have the opportunity to get uh, Carter Peavy, who is the uh, returning quarterback, down, you got to get him down. You can't let him run around back there and make plays. And in talking with with both Dwayne Vaughn and Clay Hendricks this week, looking back on that game, reviewing the film, and then when they met after the season, that game became, for lack of a better term, the line of demarcation in the focus and identity of this Furman defense. From that game forward. The decision was made to be a more aggressive, more attacking defense. And I think we've seen that through three games. Even last week at North Carolina State, the defense was aggressive. It was attacking. It did not sit back and allow a bigger, more physical, and faster North Carolina State team just run over it. It took the fight to the Wolfpack. And and the Wolfpack's biggest plays actually came when Furman had players in position to make a tackle or defend a pass and simply couldn't, didn't wrap up, didn't defend the pass. You go back to the very first offensive play of the game for NC State last week when they ran the reverse with the wide receiver Thayer Thomas coming back to the near side. The call was right. Travis Blackshear was in the right position. He just missed the tackle. And if he makes the tackle, he drops him for a loss of three or four yards, maybe more. Instead, Thomas is able to get to the outside beat that tackle, and turn it into a seven-yard gain. So the, the idea of kind of sitting back and allowing defenses to, or offenses to come at you is not the mindset of this defense anymore. This game against Mercer back in the spring was the tipping point for that. That was when the decision, the commitment was made to become a much more aggressive defense. And again, through three games, I don't think there's any question that we've seen that so far. I would highly, highly anticipate you seeing a very aggressive game call 
by defensive coordinator Dwayne Vaughn in this one, bringing pressure from every conceivable angle and then hoping that his defenders can finish off those quarterback sacks they did not get in the spring. I think that's going to be the key. Can they not only hit Carter Peavy, but can they bring him down? Can they sack him? Can they generate that kind of pressure that disrupts, doesn't allow him to to get outside the pocket and make plays on the run? Can they keep him uh, from becoming mobile? Can they hit him? Can they get him down? They did not do that in the spring. That's going to be one of the focuses we're going to be watching in this one. And then, of course, I think the other one is going to be the the uh, continuing story of Furman's offense. Throw NC State out, even though there were some plays to be made in that game. You go back to North Carolina A&T in the opener three weeks ago. You go back to Tennessee Tech on the road two weeks ago. And although you scored 29 and 26 points respectively in those games, there's no question that there were many, many points that were left on the field. And one of the things that we've talked about with George Quarles is red zone offensive efficiency. We're scoring in the red zone, but we're having to settle for field goals in the red zone, and that's not something they want to do. The The idea is to get, uh, when you get in the red zone, to get touchdowns at least 70% of the time. Right now, Furman has scored touchdowns 33% of the time in the red zone. They've been there nine times with seven scores, 78%, which is a very good conversion rate, but only three of those nine have been touchdowns. Got to make the plays in the passing game when they're there, and Clay Hendricks has been harping on the fact, and, and so is George Quarles, that they need to get more out of the running game, that they have been getting just in effect the bare minimum, whatever is there, instead of making plays, instead of running through contact, instead of making defenders miss and turning a five-yard gain into a 15-yard gain. Right now, for the most part, they've just been getting the minimum in the running game. So I think that's that's going to be the, the two focal points that we'll be watching from a booth in this game, among others. Of course, the, uh, the subplots develop throughout the course of the game, and we try to keep up with it here on the Ingalls Furman Radio Network. But how aggressive and successfully aggressive will Dwayne Vaughn's defense be, and is this the week – and Clay Hendricks says he believes that the offense is getting closer and closer to playing at a level he wants it to play. Is this the week that we see them break through? And it would be a great week to do so in conference play. Uh, the league standings, as we get set to wrap up, there's only been one league game played so far, and that was Sanford and Western Carolina. And Sanford won that one, so you can take a look. But that's all going to start to change this week. The schedule Besides the uh, the Furman and Mercer game here, Wofford will be at VMI at 1.30, ETSU at Sanford at 3 p.m., and then Western is playing out of conference at Gardner-Webb at 6 o'clock on Saturday night. Chattanooga has the night off. If you're coming to Furman, don't forget we have the brand-new fan experience outside the Furman Fan Zone Parking lots will open at 10. The Furman Fan Zone will open at 11 a.m. with the live music on the concert stage beginning at noon. Box office also opens at noon. And then you can see the rest of the schedule there leading up to kickoff. You have the fan zone outside. you got the end zone experience inside. The Paladin Stadium gates are opening, and the Champions Walk begins at 1230 and kickoff set for 2.05 p.m. Furman and Mercer to open Southern Conference play. On the radio side of things, the Pepsi countdown to kickoff will begin at 12.30, and uh, we'll be taking you through 90 minutes of preparation conversations, as always, with both coordinators, George Quarles and Dwayne Vaughn, uh, with a uh, conversation with head coach Clay Hendricks. We'll go in the trenches with Ed Patterson and so much more. The other guy we'll visit with, uh, Tom Van Hoy will visit, with the uh, radio voice of the Mercer Bears, Rick Cameron, and uh, highlights from the NC State game. Just 90 minutes of what we hope is solid football information leading you up to kickoff. Then all that begins with the Pepsi countdown to kickoff at 1230 with Tom Van Hoy, David Cobb, Marcus McMorris, and me, Dan Scott. Thank you so much for uh, 
indulging us on this video. We hope you're enjoying these, a new wrinkle that we've added here in the uh, 2021 football season. And we're looking forward to getting this Southern Conference season kicked off on Saturday, tomorrow, as we're recording this, a 2.05 kick for Furman and Mercer here at Paladin Stadium. Again, we'll remind you that the Pepsi countdown to kickoff will begin at 12.30 on ESPN Upstate, our flagship station, 97.7 FM in Greenville, 97.1 in Spartanburg, online at ESPNUpstate.com and at odyssey.com. And you can get the link at FermanPowellmans.com as well. We've got you covered. And if you want to see the interaction in the booth, you can also go to the Furman Paladin football Facebook page, listen to the ESPN Upstate broadcast of the game, and watch the video of what goes on in the booth. We got you covered. Hope to see you here at Paladin Stadium on Saturday for Furman and Mercer. Until then, for all of us here at Furman, I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you. So long, everybody.